Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to be upgrading my i3 desktop PC with a new SSD and this Icybox mobile rack. And to really explain what is going on, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, I think I now need to transport myself to my desk. So, here I am at my desk. This is where Explaining Computers all gets put together. I do almost all of my work. And the PC I'm going to upgrade is this one. This is my i3. And this machine I use for basically all of my admin work. Basically everything that isn't video editing or graphics work is done on, on the i3. So I use it for all my writing, or for I'm doing client presentations, all my basic admin running my business. I use it for uploading all my YouTube videos, answering YouTube comments, putting presentations together, all that kind of stuff. It's a very important machine for me. It's a nice quiet machine, it's a, a low power machine, a relatively low power, so it's a nice machine to use. But it runs Windows 7. Here it is running Windows 7, that you can see it here running Windows 7 with a classic skin, but it's running Windows 7. And I do use Windows 10 before some, some of you start to say, oh, you should just use Windows 10. I do use Windows 10 on my laptop and on my test rig a lot of the time. But I like running Windows 7. But I do know that by the end of January 2020, support for Windows 7 will end and I'll have to stop using it. I know I could continue, some people will, but there won't be support. It wouldn't be, I think, sensible to use Windows 7 beyond the end of, of January 2020 because it won't have the right security patches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start running Linux Mint on this machine with various virtual machines to give me access to Windows functionality for various reasons I'll come to a, a bit later. So the upgrade I'm going to do with the new SSD, which is obviously just a new SSD. And yes, this is the SSD I showed you in a, in a previous video. Um, and with this caddy here, what I'm going to do is fit this in the front of the machine so it'll replace the, uh, the DVD drive and that will allow me to uh, take the uh, SSD here and actually insert it into this and take it out again very easily so I can switch between the current SSD which has got Windows 7 on and the new setup which will have Linux Mint and virtual machines on. So that is why I'm doing this particular upgrade to allow me to cope is maybe the wrong word, but to allow me to, to deal with the transition to Windows 7 to still go back to if I need to, so I can switch my operating systems very easily back and forth. So I now need to take this box and take it from the desk. I hate doing this, and about you, I hate taking a working system which has been sitting there for years, working very well, getting it out, disturbing all this stuff, um, but I've got to do it to do the upgrade. So I'll get on with that, and I'll come back to you when we're ready to open up this computer. So, as you can see, I've now taken the plunge and removed this machine from my desk. There's a big dusty hole where it was, so it's now time to uh, get inside. So I'll uh, just take the back off, take out a few screws, which uh, are in here. I last built this machine, or I built this machine, I think in 2014, January 2014. There's a couple of build videos showing you that. I do, do like these uh, smaller mini ITX PCs. and. Uh, I've been inside once since because I fitted an extra SSD because I do all my YouTube uploading from this uh, computer and needed a bit more space so I added a second drive just to facilitate that. But uh, there we are, the back should now come off and uh, there we are. Well, it's not too dusty either, bits of dust here and there, but uh, that's not too bad. Rather a constrained space, of course, to get everything inside here. And uh, the DVD is going to have to come out, so let's... Uh, take that out and uh, there we are, screws are removed and we'll also have to remove the uh, cable there and the power cable, there we are. This will clear the bay and you can see the uh, SSD, the boot drive here, I think it's a Samsung 840 Pro, sitting in a very interesting bay which gives us both a mounting for the drive and also two front uh, USB 3 ports. So that's the drive that's going to be coming out. I thought we might as well take it out, haven't we? Let's be, let's be wild. I didn't intend to do all this in one go, but no uh, time like the present, as they say. Take that out there and out there. And then that drive can be... No, I'm going to have to get in with a screwdriver to tape all that out, aren't I? So I'll leave that for a second and uh, we'll go and look at the parts I'm going to be fitting to uh, upgrade 
this PC. Right, let's now take a look at this, which is the mobile rack. It's going to go in the front of my i3 PC, replacing the, the DVD drive. Well, I missed the DVD drive, possibly, although I can't think of a last time I actually used it. So anyway, this is an IB2216STS, technically, if you want the part number from an IC box. And it costs, I think it was £17.99 in the UK, and it's about $19.42, I think it is, in the United States. So let's uh, get inside. You can see exactly what's going on here. And, uh, oh, it's got instructions. I didn't expect that on this thing. And um, some more instructions, or a thing you can stick on the bottom of a hard drive. And uh, there we are. Let's get it out. Get rid of the box. And, uh, oh, it's getting crowded here today. Uh, there we are. And... Uh, Aha! This is the, the thing. So basically, the front of it will be there, and there is a little slidey thing there which opens up, and then you can pop in your uh, two and a half inch drive, the SSD in our case, and then uh, it clicks back in. That's, that's very straightforward. And the reason you've got one of these is, I think if you're using a hard drive here, you stick this on the base of the hard drive to stop it making contact with that. Why isn't this part of the design? I don't know. Anyway, but uh, this is a very simple device. I did think about getting a, a double one of these. I've used a double before, so I could have had two two and a half inch drives in this. And I also thought of getting a quad because you can get four two and a half inch bays like this uh, in a five and a quarter inch bay, which is what I'm taking out. But I thought in the end it was getting so complicated, all I want to do is to actually switch around one SSD. This was all I needed. And uh, basically on the back, you've got a standard uh, SATA connectors, which would have gone on to the drive. So that's nice and nice and straightforward. You might be thinking, how is this going to fit in a five and a quarter inch drive because it's a three and a half inch unit? And the answer is, I'm going to use one of these, which basically will convert the thing so that uh, this will go in here, something like that. And then, oh look, it'll fit in our, our bigger bay. And I can't remember exactly what this is because it's been lying around in a cupboard for about five or six years. It must have come with something, but I will find a reference to something similar and put it in the video description. In terms of the upgrade, I'll also be using uh, an SSD, of course, because that's going to be going inside the bay. This is a Samsung uh, Evo SSD, which we had a look at in a previous video. I stuck it back in the box for safekeeping. There it is, which is uh, pretty good, and uh, that's going to be fine. And also, I'm going to be adding some memory to the PC. Uh, not, not what it seems. The, the PC's currently got four gigabytes of memory, which is not too bad. It's, I've had no trouble with that. I'm going to be adding some more. You might be going, oh, you're going to add 16 gigabytes of memory. I'm not, because uh, inside here is some other memory. The PC takes DDR3, as does my test rig, and my test rig was a recently upgraded from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. So this is 16, uh, uh, no, it isn't. This is eight gigabytes of memory to replace the four in the current test rig. I'm getting confused today. Do you know, I wasn't even going to shoot this video today, but I had all the stuff here, having shot with that a Panda Delta video. And I thought, I know, I'll do me upgrade, get it all sorted. So there we are. There's all the parts. Let's now put them uh, into the uh, i3 PC. Guess what's happened? I've been reading the instructions that came with the, the IC box for the little manual. And uh, in here, I found this diagram, which suggests I'd missed a piece, which is plugging into the back of the, of the rack. Where could it be? Well, if we look at the bottom of the box, under here, there is extra stuff. We have a, a SATA cable. Well, I've got SATA cables, but it's always good to have another one. And there is this adapter thingy. And this adapts from, I now know from the manual, a uh, power connector to, a Molex power connector, to SATA power, and to a, a small connector, which also goes into the back of the uh, mobile rack to power its LED. If I hadn't have used this, it wouldn't matter, but without it, I won't have an LED on the rack, which I might as well have. So let's go back to our mobile rack, which I've actually now mounted in the uh, three and a half to five and a quarter adapter. That's nice and solid. And so we can take this little thing here and plug in this to power its uh, front LED. And that is then the SATA power going in like uh, this, hopefully get in there, you little swine. There we are, that's in there, that's all uh, all good. So you can see that's all uh, plugged in. So I can now take this and we can fit it into the, the PC. 
And uh, by the magic of filmmaking, I've already switched over the RAM. Access here is terrible, let alone terrible for filmmaking. So trust me, the new RAM's got in there. And if we bring in the, uh, the rack, it's going to go in the front like this. There we are, that's going to go in, in there. It's going to want a Molex into here. Sorting out this wiring as usual is going to be tricky in a case of this size, but there we are. Oh, there was a reason we got with the Molex connectors, wasn't there? I think that's going to work. And uh, we need to attach it to data would probably be a good idea, wouldn't it? Put that in there like that, nice little click. So I now just need to put some screws in to keep this in place. And uh, there we are, that's pretty good. I'll just fasten it up a bit more tightly here. These screws are self-tap into plastic, so I'm only putting three in because just in case I want to move it in the future, but that all seems to be pretty solid. And uh, as you can see on the front, the mobile rack is now uh, securely fitted. We can just flick a button like that, take our SSD, put Windows 7 back in, clicks into place. It's now very easy to uh, exchange the uh, boot drive on this PC. So, with the wiring now as neat as it's going to get, I've tidied the things up a bit, I've also dusted inside the case. Uh, all we need to now do is to put the top cover back on. We can uh, insert the very last screw and uh, hope that this computer still works. Well, here I am, back again, and the good news is it's all working. The PC is uh, back in place. You can see it's there with its uh, bay and it's working absolutely fine. And I'm uh, running Windows 7 from the SSD, which obviously we left in the bay. The uh, only small problem was that, as you may recall, I read these instructions and I, I found out about that lead to plug in. So we had power to both SATA power and power for the LED on the bay. And uh, I found when I actually had that working that the LED on the bay was rather bright. It was purple, it flashed quite a bit. So I found it rather distracting. So in the end, I opened everything up again and redid the wiring. So I just had standard SATA power into the bay. And uh, now that's how I've got it set up. So that there's no LED on here, there's no flashing light and it's much better. So I guess the, uh, the learning point there is don't read the instructions. No, I suppose that can't be the learning point. But uh, if I hadn't looked at this, I'd never have... Uh, tried those things out, I wouldn't have had all the problems. So there we are, that's what I think of instructions today. But uh, the good thing is this works. I should be able to now switch from Windows to Linux very easily. In fact, all I've got to do is this. And there we are, as you might have heard going uh, pingy ping on the screen, we've arrived in uh, Linux Mint. Now, I've got lots of work to do getting this all set up, uh, but uh, the basics is actually there and running, which is, which is really good. So I'm more prepared than I was for the end, end of Windows 7, because I can now uh, set up my uh, Linux Mint system and get it working on this machine. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.